what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of supreme decisions and this series is latin in law i'm going to go a little bit more in depth today because i want to bring up not one not two but three aspects of latin and i'm going to show you how they're incorporated i'm going to bring in again cases that i've already used or spoke about and see how it intertwines and why it intertwines and this episode is brought to us today by my boy Noel. I appreciate you for the donation. And he did it through Google Wallet. So again, Cash App, Google Wallet, Venmo, Apple Pay. However you need to do it, get it to me so we can continue to grow. So we can continue moving forward in this fight. And we can also get me to have better videos for you. The first one is one that is the absolute easiest and one that I've gone in and coincidentally one of my most popular videos it is corpus delecti which means body of the crime what most of us forget is what the exact element of a crime is and the whole person is there needs to be an injured party why because the United States of America's Constitution has this thing under the Sixth Amendment for the right to a confront one's accuser. Because if you heard my podcast, which is again available on all major platforms, and it's called Supreme Decisions Legal Minute, I spoke about this being an adversarial system. It is set up for confrontation. And that again is what the Sixth Amendment is illustrating the right to confront one's accuser why because in order for there to be a case of charge or anything there must be an injured party and they must be injured either physically or economically therefore it has to be a crime so you're going to be doing damage to one's person or to one's property nothing more nothing less it goes into how we go and we speak about the state crimes or state statutes, codes, and ordinance being subordinate to federal statutes and Supreme Court decisions. Why? Because again, the United States Constitution of America and it states with the supremacy clause, the supreme law of the land, our Supreme Court decision, federal statutes, and treaties. When you're talking about these instances, it has nothing to do with state statutes, codes, and ordinances, which is why the Selective Incorporation Doctrine was born. And I think you heard me speak about one of the cases that's in that doctrine, which is Duncan v. Louisiana. It is one of the cases that was overturned because a state statute contradicted a federal statute because one the state cannot give you rights so the state cannot take rights away the state only offers privileges hence this is why we have corpus delecti what is the body of the crime or the element of the crime the next step of corpus delecti and you've heard me say this before as well. It's called mens rea, with his guilty mind. When we're talking about the mens rea, this is what is the thing that makes it difficult for anybody that is fighting against people, such as a prosecutor or someone even in a civil matter to prove because you have to prove mens rea you have to prove one's intent because that's why there's this thing called an accident you still have responsibility you still have liability but for an accident the severity of it is not liberty one of the things that I look at when we're talking about mens rea is the simple fact that when you have a court case that goes to court of the 5% of people that actually fight their case and go to trial, 76% of them win. 
because it is difficult to prove one's intent. Not to mention the fact that police are not trained to actually look for the truth. They are trained to close cases. They are trained to bully, manipulate, and persuade. They are not trained to close cases, to find out the truth, which is why you have so many people being released from DNA evidence years after the fact, which is why you have so many cases overturned because of missing evidence or tampered with evidence or manipulated evidence. Because in order to prove someone's intent, you damn near have to be Cleo the psychic. Because proving what someone is thinking is the most difficult thing that anyone can do, which is mens rea. And the last one I'm gonna talk about today is actus reus, which is the guilty act. This itself is intertwined with mens rea. Because first you have to think it, then you have to do it. This is again part of why they lose 70% or 76% of all cases that go to trial. Because it is difficult to prove what one is thinking and then it is even more difficult to prove them acting on it. Because just thinking something is not guilty without the act. You cannot have mens rea without actus reus, which can then not give you corpus delecti. All of them have to be together in order for there to be a criminal act. Now, here's one thing I'm going to leave you with today, and it's a great example for me, because I was asked a simple question. What if I am stopped in traffic or on my journey in my conveyance? and my tent is too dark. Now, you're gonna hear me say this over and over and over and over again. State statutes, codes, and ordinances change county to county. Why? Because each county has a different set of safety issues because it has nothing to do with law. Those are safety issues. Now, if your tent is too dark, yes, it is quite possible you're gonna be not only putting yourself in danger because it's going to obscure your vision, but you put others in danger, which for the most part you shouldn't do because you have the right to make decisions for your life, but not the lives of others. So the safety issue of the dark tent will be something that should be addressed. But now here is the greatest part about it. When you're talking about your locomotion being stopped, Delaware v. Proud states that one cannot be stopped for the inspection of one's license or even their local commercial activity decal, such as a taxi's ID. You cannot be stopped just because of that. There has to be a complaining witness or an injured party. A traffic citation, again, is a violation of the Separation of Powers Act. You know, that pesky thing that police don't like to talk about, that they took an oath to uphold and they swore to God to do so. Which, again, that oath then becomes part of a, of a fiduciary trust because the Constitution of the United States of America is a trust document for the people of this country. Why am I going into all of that? I always tell people, to get a copy of a police officer's oath of office. The reason for me doing so is because of that simple reason. It shows an agreement to that fiduciary duty. It illustrates an agreement that they've made not only to the people, but to God, that they will uphold not only the constitution of whatever state they're in, but the constitution of the United States of America, and they become the trustee of the people which is why we have statutes, codes, and ordinances for the safety of the people. So anytime one's locomotion is restricted, there has to be a guilty act with intent of a guilty mind. Mens rea and actus rea. The guilty mind and the guilty act then offers corpus delecti, 
because that will be the evidence of that guilty mind and that guilty act. So that's why you have states that are quote unquote not stopping ID states unless as the fiduciary trust of the people, the police officer or the public servant has to articulate to the person they are serving, which is the public, the corpus delecta, the actual crime. And that is not a traffic citation because a traffic citation does not offer an injured party. I'm going to say that one more time. A traffic citation does not offer a injured party or even a complaining witness that can be confronted because of the United States of America's Sixth Amendment, which is one of the things which I always talk about now is the fact that anytime your locomotion is restricted, USB Sharp says 19 minutes, 59 seconds. They have to use one of these words that makes it beautiful for me because they have officer discretion. Why? Because you remember I told you about them losing qualified immunity. It's two ways. A willful act or ignorance. So if they're using officer discretion to write a citation, writing of a citation is a willful act to deprive one of their liberty without cause. So thus violating one's oath and fiduciary trust. Again, you remember I gave you the code for a fiduciary trust violation by a police officer. I also told you, get a copy of that oath of office. Why? Because it has to be filed within 60 days of them taking it, which illustrates that they have signed it. There was no coercion because that is a contract with the police officer himself as well as the people that is the contract so if you have a willful act to write a citation there is no complaining witness it is then a violation and a loss of qualified immunity why because there is no mens rea there is no actus reus there is no corpus delecti now here's the greatest thing about that if there's something that can show me being incorrect please put it in the comments let me know where you're coming from remember when you're donating cash app apple pay like noel did google wallet and venmo hit your boy up we got more videos coming and they're going to be just as in depth they're going to be just as informative because we're going to start putting this stuff together and i'm also going to start putting things together to show you how to put this all in front of yourself for court so you can prepare to fight the right way you don't hold court in the street you hold it in a courtroom and you make it to your advantage and you start winning until next time Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no spoon? Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends. It is only yourself. <laughs>